सहनावतु सहलोभुनक्तु सह वीर्य कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावदितमस्तु मिदिशावह ओ शांति 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 Dear friends, we are going to discuss the semi-lunar cartilage injuries today. And before we start the discussion on the injuries to the semi-lunar cartilage, let us revise the anatomy. The semi-lunar cartilages are two crescent-shaped plates of fibrocartilage that are placed on the condylar surface of the tibia. They are commonly known as the medial and lateral menisci and are unique in that not all species have menisci in their knees and not all joints have menisci they are vital for the function of the knee joint let us compare the features of both the menisci now look at this particular chart you will understand feature wise if you look at the shape of the menisci the medial meniscus is semi circular in shape whereas the lateral meniscus is circular then the anterior horn of the medial meniscus it is attached to the tibial intercondylar eminence in front of the acl whereas the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus is attached to the intercondylar eminence of the tibia lateral to the acl when we look for the posterior horn it is attached to the of the medial meniscus is attached to the intercondylar area in front of the pcl and behind the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus whereas the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus is attached to the intercondylar eminence similarly the outer aspect of the medial meniscus is attached to the posterior fiber of tibial collateral ligament however the outer aspect of the lateral meniscus is separated from the fibular collateral ligament and the capsule and popliteus the mobility wise the medial meniscus is less mobile whereas the lateral meniscus is more mobile if you look at the vascular supply of the meniscus the vascular supply to both the menisci is from the lateral medial and middle geniculate vessels look at this particular diagram the depth of the vascular penetration at the periphery is 10 to 30% width of the medial meniscus and 10 to 25% width of the lateral meniscus in the cross section they appear triangular as you can see in the first picture and the thicker peripheral portion is very much vascular and heals well it is known as red red zone the thin central edge is avascular receiving nutrition by diffusion and hence heals purely it is called as white white zone and the coming to the functions of the menisci the eight different functions of the menisci can be enumerated as follows one it contributes towards the stability of the knee joint second weight transmission of 40 to 70% of the load across the knee joint is facilitated with the menisci it also act as a shock absorber it deepens the tibial condyle on which the femoral condyle roll by increasing the contact area by 40% fifth function they assist in nutrition of the articular cartilage by distribution of the synovial fluid the sixth important function it it helps the knee in locking mechanism the screw hole mechanism whenever the knee is extended completely and seven it prevents impingement of the synovial membrane capsule tc and finally the eighth function it assists and controls gliding and rolling motion of the knee now let us start with the discussion on the medial meniscus injuries 
Medial meniscus is more commonly injured than the lateral and is usually associated with the ligament injuries of the knee. Medial meniscus injury is seen in over 70% of the 71% of the cases. In 5% of the cases, injury to the medial meniscus is bilateral, that is in both the knee joints. Now, the lateral meniscus is less commonly injured than the medial meniscus because 1. It is smaller in diameter, 2. The thicker in periphery, 3. It is wide, 4. It is more mobile, 5. It is attached to both the cruciate ligaments and 6. It is stabilized posteriorly to the femoral condyle by the popliteus. So these are the reasons why the lateral meniscus is less commonly injured. The smiley has described five types of the tear as shown in this particular diagram. Just have a look. The first is the longitudinal tears. 35% of the cases in this peripheral attachment tear may be 10%, complete tear may be 23% as shown uh, by the diagram D. We call it as a bucket handle tear and segmental tear 2% which may be anterior or posterior. Then there are the horizontal tears, 48% of the time it could be posterior, middle or anterior. Then there could be cystic uh, degeneration, 12% of the cases, congenital abnormalities in 5% and finally the degenerative lesions. Mechanism of injury. Mechanism of injury is a rotational force when a flexed knee extends. As you can see in this particular picture, in young, it can occur only when the weight is being taken, the knee is flexed and there is a twisting strain. The young active athletes, they are more prone as shown in this particular picture. In middle-aged life, the fibrosis has decreased the mobility of the meniscus and hence the tear occurs with the less force. Let us see what are the predisposing factors. Now these could be abnormal meniscal shape, one, it may be abnormal stress due to the chronic ligament laxity, etc. Then the, coming to the clinical features, the patient with the medial meniscus injury presents with the pain on the inner aspect of the knee. There may be history of locking, which is usually seen in 40% of the cases and swelling if present is minimal. There is remarkable recovery after the initial acute attack and there could be periodic complaints pertaining to the knee joint. Now the symptoms after the initial injuries. The patient complains of pain on the inner side of the knee. History of locking is positive in 40% of the cases. Swelling of the knee sometimes Recovery after the initial episode is always there and then further incidents as follows. 1. The knee periodically gives trouble. 2. Locking history may or may not to be there which is unreliable. 3. Unlocking if present is pathognomonic. And 4. Feeling of something moving within the joint. We call as the mouse inside the joint. And a click may be heard and may complain of pain on the inner side of the knee. So these are the clinical features of the medial meniscal injury. Now, what is locking? Locking is defined as restriction of the last few terminal degrees of extension of the knee. Now, in between incidents, the knee absolutely, it appears absolutely normal. So the signs are locking positive, Macmurray's test positive, Apple's grinding test positive, the Pius squat test positive, Duck Waddle test positive, Stinman's sign positive, Helfet's sign positive, quadriceps atrophy may be present, and finally the medial joint line tenderness, it has to be there. Let us try to understand these clinical tests one by one. The Macmurray's test, look at the picture. To detect the medial meniscal injury, the knee is flexed completely and the leg is rotated externally with the adduction force at the knee, it is gradually extended. A positive MacMurray's test requires both the pain 
and clung to be felt by the examiner's finger on the medial side. You have to keep your finger on the medial joint line. For the lateral meniscus, the leg is internally rotated. For medial, we had rotated it externally. For lateral meniscus, we are rotating it internally and extended with the abduction force on the knee. Now, the positive result is indicated by the lateral joint line pain and the clamp. The second test, the Aples test. The patient is prone, fixing the thigh against the bed using examiner's knee. So, so you can see here in the particular picture, the examiner has put his knee over the posterior aspect of the patient's thigh. And now pressing on the leg on the patient's knee, he just flexes the knee of the patient to be tested and then he presses against the knee. The leg is pressed against the knee. The examiner now rotates the leg inwards and outwards. Now the grinding pain noted during the axial compression implies meniscal tear. In the same position, when instead of compression, a distraction force is applied and then leg is rotated. So the pain felt will be suggestive of MCL tear if it is on medial side or LCL tear if it is on the lateral side. The duck waddle test. The patient assumes a squatting position as you can see in this particular diagram with the heel touching the buttocks and is then asked to perform a duck walk. Now the patient will be unable to assume full squatting position in the medial meniscal injuries as you can see here he is not able to flex his right knee completely. Now this is what is called as a child rest sign and is a diagnostic test for the posterior horn tear of the medial meniscus. Usually in the middle aged, uh, middle aged persons the degenerative posterior horn tear of the medial meniscus occurs. Now there is something known as Tinman sign. The meniscal pathology can be suspected if the medial pain is elicited on the lateral rotation. So you just flex the hip and then knee and then you rotate the leg. So on lateral rotation if you get the medial head pain then that is suggestive of the medial meniscal injury. And the lateral side pain on the medial tibial rotation suggests the lateral meniscal injury. This is what is the statement sign. The Helfet sign. Now in normal knee, in sitting position, the tibial tubercle lies in the line with the midline of the patella. And when the knee is extended, the lateral tibial rotation puts it in the line with the lateral border of the patella. Now a positive sign occurs when the rotation is blocked by a torn meniscus and the tubercle remains centered over the patella in extension also. So that is what you call it as a Helfet sign. So whenever Helfet sign is positive, it is a suggestion of the meniscal tear blocking the external rotation of the leg. Then here point to be noted is one, the Aples test is unique among the meniscus test because of its ability to distinguish between the ligamentous and the meniscal tear. A positive meniscus test confirms the suspicion only of the meniscus lesion. However, negative tests do not rule out a tear with absolute confidence. No one test is diagnostic and hence a combination of tests are carried out. With this, the accuracy rate of the diagnosis ranges to 60 to 95 percent. The routine workup could be best include the joint line tenderness one, the McMurray's test and third, the Stinman sign. Coming to the investigation part, radiograph is usually normal. The views recommended are the anteroposterior, lateral, intermandular notch and the sunrise view of the patella. Arthroscopy helps to identify the torn meniscus. You can see in this particular picture how there is a gap within the red circle mark here. Then arthrography. Arthrography may reveal the tear. The double contrast arthrography is 95% accurate. However, nowadays the arthrography is not done so routinely. Just for the sake of completeness, we are including or mentioning the arthrography. 
MRI is expensive but very useful. It has become a gold standard non-invasive investigation for the meniscal injuries. Then the differential diagnosis, fracture of tibial spine if present may give clue to the possible ACL tear. It also helps to exclude the osteochondritis difficulties. You know, we, we have to have a differential diagnosis of osteochondritis difficulties because of the loose bodies. Then osteocartilaginous loose body that they see. The quick diagnostic point in the medial meniscal injuries include one, the midline joint, uh, mid, uh, medial joint line tenderness is positive in 74%. Apples grinding test is positive in 46%. There may be painful hyperextension in 43% of the cases. The Stidman sign positive in 42% of cases and McMurray sign positive in 35% of the cases. Hence, no one test is diagnostic. That is why the multiple tests are required for the diagnosis. Coming to the treatment, the conservative treatment. This is indicated in patients soon after the injury with no locking and with infrequent attacks of pain and in tears less than 10 mm partial thickness tear. Now the various conservative measures include abstinence from the weight bearing one, rest, ice packs and compressive band is what we call as a RICE. R I C E R for rest, I for ice, C for compression, E for elevation. Then the box skin traction can be given, joint can be aspirated if there is effusion and the quadriceps exercises are begun. The, if the symptom persists, a cylindrical cast may be considered. Manipulation under anesthesia, if the joint is locked due to the torn menisci, manipulation under anesthesia is also recommended. The differential diagnosis for the locking, there may be a true locking or a pseudo locking as shown in this particular table. The true locking may be because of the loose bodies, the recurrent dislocation of the patella or the fracture of the tibial spine or the meniscal injuries. However, the pseudo locking may be because of ligament injuries and chondromalacia patellae. So the treatment Surgical treatment indications, the surgery is indicated if the joint cannot be unlocked and if the symptoms are recurrent. So the methods include one, the arthroscopic meniscus repair. This is the treatment of choice of let. Repair is indicated if the tear is more than 10 mm or is unstable on probing. Repair is successful in the outer third, that is red red zone age of the vascular rim that is red white zone and even in a few avascular zone that is what white white zone coming to the meniscectomy the partial closed partial meniscectomy via an arthroscopy is better than the total removal of the menisci by open surgery in cases with the total meniscectomy Cadaveric meniscal transplant may be considered. However, this is still in an evolving stage. Now, the complete removal of the menisci incapacitates the knee, and hence the emphasis is on the conservative surgery than the radical removal. Now, what is the importance of meniscus for the knee? Consider following facts. One, the partial meniscectomy increases the stress by 50 to 60 percent. The total meniscectomy increases the stress by 200 to 235 percent. And meniscal repair may normalize the stress. And hence, the treatment fact remains nothing like normal meniscus. One. Two, if minor lesions and asymptomatic, better leave it alone. 3. Partial meniscectomy better than total and 4. Resuturing in appropriate locations and finally 5. Earlier it was said when in doubt remove. Now the concept is when in doubt observe do not treat. Thank you. Thank you for 
you are patient listening hope that you are regularly visiting my youtube channel subscribe it share it please do it now sharing and subscribing thank you